Moving right into the next session. We've got no time to waste. Jenna, are you here with me? Here's the button. <laughs> hey, you're muted. How's it going? Uh, just unmute really quick and then we will be ready. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Awesome. We're ready. If you'd like to share your screen, I'll uh, okay. just pass it over to you and we'll get right into this next session. Sounds good. Let me pull this up really quick. All right. Can you see that? And here it is. Perfect. Awesome. You're good to go. I'm wonderful. Popping well, off. I'll let you introduce yourself. Thanks so much, Jenna. Thanks, Derek. Um, so thank you so much for having me. We have a lot to get through today in a, in a short period of time. So I want to jump right in. But I just wanted to say thank you for having us here, um, Constant Contact, for having us here and for attending the Winning in E-Commerce with Email Marketing uh, session that we are going to present to you today. Um, I know that in a time where a lot of people are always talking about how do I get new customers or where do I find new customers? Here at Constant Contact, we really feel like um, the best customers that you'll have to be able to really increase your online sales and um, and build that revenue with your business is with your existing customers. And so a lot of what we'll talk about today is going to be focused around that and also how you can leverage email marketing with social media marketing in order to do that and to really uh, just maximize your success in that online e-commerce world. Um, so with that being said, my name is Jenna Schaefer. I'm a programs marketing manager at Constant Contact, and I've been with the company. It'll be 13 years in October. And so in those 13 years, I've learned a lot and I've heard a lot from different businesses about what works best for them in their email marketing space and online marketing space. And so hopefully today I'll be able to share some of those tips and tricks with you and really leveraging um, those, those best practices to really help you see that success online. So as I mentioned before, um, your greatest asset is going to be your repeat customers or your existing customers. And research shows this over and over and over again. So here are some statistics around that. You have about 80% of your profits are actually going to come from 20% of your existing customers. So that's a large chunk of your business and a large chunk of the pie that's really coming from even just a small part of your existing business, which means that it's really impactful. 90% of your consumers want to stick with uh, want to stick with familiar companies and brands. So the people that they know, like, and trust and have built a relationship with, they feel some sort of rapport with and want to do business with more. So that's important that we build that relationship over time and email marketing. Email marketing can help you with that. Um, it also costs you far, far less to market to your existing customers and these repeat customers than it does to attract new customers. So you'll actually see that it costs you about five times less to encourage them to purchase with you again than it would to um, try to find new customers. So the ROI is a lot bigger for you there. Um, and then you can actually improve your retention by about 5% and boost your profits by 75%. So if you just focus on retaining those important people who, again, know, like, and trust you, you're going to see a huge boost in your profits and your revenue that way as well. And that's because loyal customers spend about 300 times or percent more than new customers. So all of these really tie in together to bring you what you need in terms of building your online revenue, building your e-commerce uh, presence and brand awareness. Hey, Jenna, uh, I just realized you're sharing the uh, the back end deck instead of the, the full screen thing. So we're actually oh. not seeing the, the slides. Okay, let me swap it out again. to the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay. like, oh, we can see the notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no big deal. Let's see here. Um, should be like window. Yeah, that's full like screen, the first it, time. Be, um, I think this is the same. Yeah, the, I think it's still the notes here. Can you see it now? Because it's in presentation mode for me. No, what you can do. So in slideshow, you want to set up custom slideshow and do presenter view. Okay. Um, should get you. Uh, Does that work? Um, no, go ahead and un unshare this screen and then reshare it as a 
window, I think is what we want. Okay. PowerPoint has done this to us. I okay. know, I'm sorry. It's so okay, we, we only had one technical mishap in the last event or yesterday, and we'll only have one technical mishap today. Uh, I, am, <laughs> I am showing it in the, let me try it one more time. Okay. Are you a one screen person? Because we, if it's one screen, you could just share your whole screen and then go live. Okay, yeah, that I am a one screen person. <laughs> I'm a that. one screen, but it's 36 inches wide. So if I share <laughs> it, people will be like, what is going on? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's try Up this and present. There it looks great. Does Perfect. That work and for you? The hide button on this stream yard is sharing your screen thing. Okay. Here. Does that work? Yes. You are good okay, to go. Awesome. Let's get back into it. So sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Um, okay. So when we're talking about um, when we are talking about email marketing as a part of your entire online or digital strategy. We at Constant Contact believe that email marketing is actually going to be the cornerstone to your success. So it's kind of the glue that ties everything else together, that drives traffic to your social media, that overcomes algorithms. It also has the highest ROI or return on investment for your business. Um, it can increase your SEO and your search engine optimization. So it really is the cornerstone and the glue to everything that you're doing. Um, and I mentioned the ROI. So when we look at comparatively to all other types of digital marketing channels, email marketing is going to bring about $42 for every dollar that you spend on it. Um, and I think the next highest is going to be about so, uh, is going to be social media, which is at about $33 or $32. So extremely impactful. Now, when we talk about or when we see um, when we think about this in terms of the the value of our list and when we're the money that we're actually spending or the money that it actually brings in think of it this way so even if you have a really really small list say 10 people and your average price of product or service is again i'm going to keep the numbers small and simple is $50 hypothetically what that means is every time you send an email your email is worth $500 now, that's hypothetically, and we know that you and I both know that not everybody within that email is going to take action on whatever it is that you're wanting them to do. But if you think about even just getting one person, two people, three people to act on that email, that's not only where you see the, dollar, the dollars made up for what you've spent on email marketing, but that's where you start to see that return and that profit. So, and it happens very quickly and very easily too. So how do we make sure that this happens and how do we make sure that we're really successful with this? Well, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of email marketing to improve retention. So we're gonna talk about some very, very basic things, whether you're doing them or not doing them, I think that you'll be able to, to get some helpful hints and tips out of that today. Um, we'll talk about segmentation and automation because this is actually something, uh, a tactic that is very underutilized within the email marketing industry. And I want to make sure that all of us are starting to do these things and best practices to make sure that you're really maximizing your success with that. Um, and then we want to talk about getting to the next level with data and predictive analytics. So how can we actually leverage AI? How can we leverage automation um, so that the, the work is being done for us so that we're not there manually doing this on a weekly or even monthly basis, um, that email marketing is working for us and not us working for email marketing. And of course, we're going to talk about how social media ties into all of this as well. So let's go ahead and jump into the fundamentals of using email marketing to improve your retention. So when, we, when you first start out thinking about your email marketing strategy, your email marketing strategy should really include two different types of emails. And the first one is promotional. And the second one is non-promotional. And the reason that we want to make sure that we're including both of these types of emails, promotional is really kind of driven towards that sale, that initial um, you know, call to action, getting them to, to purchase from you or register or whatever the case may be, that they're taking action on that uh, particular call to action within your email. And non-promotional is really there to build a relationship with them over time. So we, you know, they, they always say that there's about seven interactions with somebody before somebody actually uh, makes a, a purchasing decision with your business. And we don't really know what stage in the sales process that that consumer may be in at that moment. 
And so promotional emails are really great as a part of your strategy to, again, warrant that action, get them to, to make a purchase or take an action right away. But for those of, of your audience members or your subscribers that are not ready to take an action with you yet, we want to nurture that relationship. Remember, going back to those statistics in the beginning, that people want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And so if we can create non-promotional emails, position ourselves as the expert and really think about the long game and the long-term relationship that we have with them, those are going to nurture, nurture that audience um, and that consumer so that they're closer to taking that action when you do send out those promotional emails. So it's really important that we bring in both of those emails into your marketing strategy. Essentially, building your brand is and, and telling uh, stories and, and sharing anecdotes about your brand is going to build that rapport with your audience. Okay. So that's the, those are the two different types of emails that we want to include in our email marketing strategy. Now I often get the question, what should I say in an email or how do I speak to my audience? I never know what to say or what to share. Um, and here for you, I have uh, some different helpful tips for this. So really what we're trying to accomplish is answer three different questions. The first question is, what are you offering? So why are you even emailing your um, the subscriber? And the headline is really going to tell people what that is. And we'll get into subject lines in a little bit. Um, but you can also include that within your subject line too. That's really where initially they think, okay, well, why is this person emailing me? Is it something that I'm even interested in? So to make sure that you have a, a, catch, a catchy headline, something that's intriguing to you, um, that is super important. The second question that you're trying to ask is, how will it help the reader? So that's going to be included in the body of your email. So that's going to answer any, uh, that's where you'll share anecdotes, That that's where you'll provide a solution for your audience. And that's really important for people too, is to say, well, why is it important to me? And how is this going to help me in my everyday life? So that's what you want to include in the body of your email. Um, and then the third question that you're trying to answer for your audience is, what should they do next? So you would be super surprised um, to hear how many emails I've seen where a brand is asking somebody to do something. They're asking them to take some sort of call to action. And they've, they haven't given them a way to do that within their email. So make sure that you always have some sort of call to action that you're actually driving them out of your email somewhere else to go and take that action. That's another, um, I guess, obstacle that I run into or, or objection that I get a lot is, well, um, I don't want them to leave my email. I want them to stay in the email and consume the information in there. And I say, no, 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 that's not what we want. We actually do want people to leave your email. And I'll give you a few reasons why here in just a moment. But one of the biggest reasons is to help increase your SEO. So if you're driving them to your website or a purchasing landing page, that's going to help increase your search engine optimization. That's more hits on your website, which makes you more visible when people are searching for you, right? Or searching for a business like yours. Um, and then the second reason is really to help you overcome social algorithms. So if we're driving them to our social platforms, we're directing them exactly to where they need to be to have the conversation with you there. So we'll, again, we'll dive into that a little bit more into detail in just a moment. But when we are creating emails, we wanna make sure that we have these three aspects, a headline, a message body, and a call to action. Okay, so, um, another thing when we talk about the content of our emails, and especially when it comes to promotional emails, we really want to think about uh, designing to drive action. So um, typically when I give these best practices, people give me kind of a, a, a shocked response um, because we're so used to using email marketing as a means to send newsletters. And we'll talk about newsletters in just a moment, but when we're talking about promotional emails, we actually wanna keep it really, really focused into just one topic. So it's best to keep your email to a picture, a paragraph, and a call to action. And typically we see the most successful emails that are sent out and that drive the most action are emails that are 20 lines of text or less. And this is where segmentation is going to become a really big part of your strategy as well. If you are segmenting your lists and you're sending really targeted information 
to the people who have requested it, it's going to be easier for you to keep that content really short and sweet. But typically people don't wanna see big, big chunks of text. Um, they don't want to, I always say the dirty little secret about email marketing is that people actually don't read your emails. They look for things to click on, they look for things to interact with. Um, and so we wanna keep that really short and sweet. And the best way to do that is a picture, a paragraph and a call to action. Now, non-promotional uh, emails can be a little bit different because you're trying to provide more value. And this could mean that you are including different storytelling or anecdotes that you have. You can share um, background to your business or how you got started as a brand. Um, and so you're, again, we're thinking about the long-term relationship that we have with our subscribers. And so we're trying to add a little bit more value to that um, versus just trying to sell them something. And so typically these can be a little bit longer, but we still want to keep them really short and sweet. But think about the stories that you want to tell about your business. In this case here, we have Treat, treat Cupcake Bar. Um, they might want to share seasonal flavors or party preparation guides, education about processes. You can share free downloads that you have about your brand brand or um, if any sweepstakes that you want them to enter into, okay? Think about ways that you can engage them other than just trying to get them to purchase something from you. So these can be a little bit longer, but we want to provide value and offer education that really sets us up as the expert in the long run. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the idea of a newsletter because again, I get a lot of objections. Well, I have a lot more content to send and a lot more information that I want my subscribers and my consumers to know about my business other than just purchasing something right away or just you know one topic. I have a bunch of things that I'm trying to say. And, um, and so when it gets to that point, there are still ways that you can effectively create and send an e uh, a newsletter email, um, but still keep it short and sweet and effective, okay? So my tips for creating newsletters, again, make your introduction personal. And if you're a smaller brand that's selling online, this is actually a benefit to you because um, you can be a little bit more personal and it feels a little bit more natural to do that. But even with larger brands, people want to feel like they're not a part of an email blast with thousands and thousands of people on it, right? They want to feel like this email was created specifically for them. So if you can keep it conversational, again, we're building that rapport and that relationship with our audience. It's a little bit more effective and people are more likely to, uh, it, it kind of lends itself to them wanting to purchase with you. They feel that they know more about you as a brand or as a person even. Um, keep it to three sections. So I know with our the previous uh, slide, I said keep it to a picture, a, a paragraph, and a call to action. But if you're going to break that rule, have no more than three topics or articles or sections, whatever you want to call it within your email. And within those sections, you still want to keep it to a picture a paragraph and a call to action and give them some sort of read more button or learn more button where they can go elsewhere to read the rest of your content. Again, that's going to help drive them to your website or your social channels that build your SEO, that build your visibility online. So it's actually a good thing if we drive them out. But again, keep it to three sections and within those sections, a picture, a paragraph and a call to action. And then we want to use a brief intro to each topic. So again, that kind of lends itself going back to those three sections and having a shop now or a um, read more button. But what you can do in order to create brief introductions to each topic and then leverage going uh, elsewhere or getting them to go elsewhere is to drive your audience through tools um, social tools that will, will overcome algorithms. So I want to dive a little bit into how you can use these social tools um, to really kind of boost that interaction and that engagement on social media. Because this is a really, really big, um, I guess, tactic and, and behavior that you want to take advantage of with your audience. Um, email marketing 20 years ago was a means to share all the information and for for them to consume that information in the newsletter itself. But with all of these other social channels or all these other marketing channels, 
we want to leverage those other channels because we know that they're on those platforms as well, that they're not only engaging with your brand there, but they're also engaging with each other there. And we want to be a part of that conversation. And so email marketing is a great way to do that when it's used with social tools. So we have our social buttons and you'll see in this example here, it's just included at the bottom of the email. And this allows people to go and follow you on social media. So you want to include those within your emails because that's going to help you build your audience, build a following in a community, and then promote audience engagement. And I've actually seen people before within their emails say, um, they'll prompt a question. Hey, what do you think about XYZ within their email? Go to our latest Facebook post or go to our latest Instagram post and comment what you think or what you like. Right. And so it drives them to the social channels. Most likely they'll go and follow you there. But then you're actually getting them to interact with you on social media. Um, and the, the great part about this is that social platforms now are are deeming if you ask within a social post, hey, comment if you think this or like if you appreciate that or share if you feel this way. If you say those things within the social posts, then those social platforms deem that as an inauthentic interaction. And you can actually be penalized for doing that. And so this is a great way for you to start a conversation within your email marketing and then prompt them to go to those platforms to comment, share, like that way it's an authentic interaction, right? So you're asking them elsewhere, but still driving them directly to those platforms to do it. So it's a great way to build that community and promote that audience engagement. We also have a social share button. So within Constant Contact, you can grow your list and gain subscribers. Um, when you send out an email, this is a great way to build your list. You can, you can schedule the email that you've already sent out to publish on your different social platforms. So if for some reason somebody isn't subscribed to your email list yet, that's okay because what they'll see is, hey, did you forget to subscribe to our email updates? Read our email below and subscribe to our list for future updates by texting. And then you can give them some sort of, um, you know, text to join code if you have that. Um, or if they click directly on the email within this published post, then they have an opportunity to subscribe there as well. So just by including those social buttons within the email and then publishing your email on your different social platforms through social share, we can really maximize how much people are engaging with our emails, how much they're learning from our brand, and then they're most likely subscribing. So now we've got new subscribers um, that we can communicate and nurture those relationships with in the future. So how often should I send? Um, I often get this question. It really just kind of, and I hate answering this way, but it really just depends on your audience, who you are, and uh, and what kind of content you're sending. Again, if you're if you're sending to one list, just one general list, we call it the spray and pray. You're sending it to everyone and praying it's relevant to somebody. <laughs> Most likely, you're not going to get high open rates, high engagement. So you want to keep that sent to maybe once a month. But if you're creating targeted segmented lists and you're sending out emails to people who have requested that specific information, who have shown interest in that type of uh, topic or category, um, or even if you have segmented your list based off of certain purchasing behaviors or click behaviors, um, most likely you can send more frequently to them. They're more tolerant of receiving more frequent emails because you're sending exactly what they need when they need when they need it. So you have to consider your audience. You have to consider the expectations that you've set with your audience. Um, when you're thinking about promotional emails, though, you do want to make sure that you are sending an announcement a reminder and a last chance email. So we want to give people an opportunity to know that this event or this promotion is happening, when it's happening, and then a last chance email. Typically that three uh, part reminder is going to be a really, uh, it's going to set you up for success to get people to take action within those promotional emails. Okay, so to review the fundamentals of email marketing, we talked about 
promotional, non-promotional emails, the difference between those and including them both in your marketing strategy, um, making sure that promotional emails are simple and focused into the point to drive action and the frequency depending on your business, your audience, and if you're segmenting your lists. So I do wanna jump into segmentation and automation a little bit just to um, talk about how we can best, best utilize uh, these these practices to make sure that you're really um, driving success with your audience. So if you are unfamiliar with segmentation, segmentation essentially just means that you are creating relevant groups of, of subscribers and grouping them into smaller groups based off of their different interests, maybe non-interests, um, or even purchasing behaviors. And the reason we do this is because, again, we want to make a consumer feel or a subscriber feel like we are sending specifically to them. When we send an email, we want our consumers to think, wow, this was just what I needed when I needed it, right? And so if we can create smaller groups of, of uh, content, or I'm sorry, of contacts, and then send the content that they want and that they need, then that's going to create this feeling of, wow, I every time this brand sends me an email, it's always something that's valuable to me. That's what, where you're going to see higher open rates and higher click-through rates, okay? So some different ways that you can segment your contacts. You can segment based off of specific products or product types, um, whether people are new customers or existing customers, maybe recent purchases or how often they're purchasing from you, um, how engaged they are or least engaged. Now, if you are selling online, if you have some sort of e-commerce platform like Big Commerce, WooCommerce, Shopify, these tools typically have filters that you can use to find different types of segments. And then you can actually import them into Constant Contact. So they make it super easy for you to find the different types of, of um, customers that you want to communicate with. And then you can export those into whatever email marketing program that you're using. Constant Contact specifically has smart segments too. So we can look up if you want to find somebody that um, the segments or I'm sorry, the contacts that you've sent emails to and they've opened up emails within the past e three emails that you've sent out and that they've at least clicked once in one of those emails, that's going to tell me, okay, these people are reading my emails and they're engaged. So we have different smart segments that you can use within product as well that are going to help you narrow down on the people that you really do truly want to communicate with. But these are just a few ideas on ways that you can segment your list. Okay. Um, another way that you can segment your list and target your audience is through, it's called click segmentation. And this is when somebody clicks on a link within your email, they can automatically merge or be added into an, an interest category that you choose. So if I, for example, want to um, segment people who I know are really, really hot leads or really close to purchasing with me, maybe they clicked on buy now but they didn't purchase yet. Well, I can take those, the people who have clicked on my buy now link and I can merge them into a different list. So maybe I, I call it a hot leads list or something like that. Um, and then maybe I take that hot leads list and I send them an extra incentive. So it's always good to send them some sort of, especially if they're on the fence about purchasing with you, to send them some sort of promo code or some sort of discount coupon, something like that that will help them nudge them into that purchasing um, that purchasing category. So click segmentation is really going to be helpful for you with that. I tell people to intentionally put links in their emails that will give them information about their consumers. So if you want to find out who's really interested in a new product that you've launched, put in a link to that new to learn more about that new product. That's good every time somebody clicks on that, you can merge them into that specific type of interest category or even just see those click-throughs and say, okay, these are the people who are interested in it. And if you want to take it a step further using automation, then you can set up a series around that topic that they receive after they've clicked. So that's a really great way to maximize and increase those sales is to nurture it, nurture those contacts with the information um, about uh, the things that they're clicking on. So again, saving time by automating your emails and social posts 
um, to new contacts. So as soon as they click on things within their emails, they're automatically getting emails that talk about that certain interest topic. Okay. Um, some other automated emails that you can think about sending are obviously an abandoned cart email. That is by far one of the best tools that you can use if you're trying to sell more in less time, have some sort of abandoned cart email set up. So if they don't purchase that, you're just, again, giving that, that little extra nudge, provide some sort of promotion code or discount um, for them to take that action. Um, we also have another really great automated email that I recommend sending our ones. Uh, it's like a welcome series, basically to new subscribers. So if we're getting people to share our emails on social media or they're talking about the the things that we um, the questions that we prompted within our emails on social media or we've published our our emails on social media. Um, people are going to be interested in subscribing to your newsletter. And it's always great to welcome them with a welcome series. So the welcome series can include welcoming them, encouraging sales right away, right when they get that welcome email, offering them some sort of discount for joining your list or some sort of benefit to joining your list, um, and then onboarding those new customers. You can, again, invite them to social media to join your community there. Um, you can share expertise around why you're the brand that they should be working with or purchasing from. So this is a great nurture series that you can set up and just forget as well. And then if we're talking about automating our social posts, we do have a feature within Constant Contact that allows you to create and schedule different social posts. So it's kind of, um, it's, it's basically like a social me media aggregator. It's kind of like a hoot suite, but it's all within products. So it directly integrates with your email marketing. So you can go in, you can create and schedule social posts to go out, and then you can actually interact with your audience. So you can see those comments rolling in. You can respond to them directly within um, the social post product and see what kind of interaction you're receiving. And then you get analytics around this too. So you can see how many how many people you've reached through those social posts, how many people have interacted, how many impressions you've made, um, because we know that interactions are a little bit different than impressions, right? And so thinking about ways that we can automate those things is really going to be helpful for you. And again, all of this is tying into your email marketing. Okay, so when we're talking about segmenting our lists and automation, we wanted to, um, we're talking about how to create smaller groups of like-minded contacts, how to cater those messages to those groups, and automate sending more timely emails and social posts using automated tools. Now, I do want to jump into, this is our last topic of using automation and next level data to predict what people are doing and how they're reacting. So up until this point, what we've been doing is we've been playing checkers with our email marketing. We're doing everything manually and we're waiting to see how they're reacting to decide what type of emails to send out next in our strategy. But if you wanna take your email marketing to the next level, we wanna use AI or artificial intelligence to play more so checkers, right, or I'm sorry, chess with our emails. So rather than saying, okay, I'm going to be reactive to the things that they're doing within my emails or my social posts, I want to be proactive instead. If they act this way, we already have an email that's going to send them this. Or if they respond this way, we already have an email set up that's going to send them this. So we're already thinking about the, the steps ahead of time and letting the system work for us. So this is an example. This is a tool that we have at Constant Contact. It's our pro package. So if you are an e-commerce business with a bit of a larger list around 5,000 contacts or more, and you're working with an e-commerce tool, this is really going to be something with Constant Contact that you'll want to look into. And we actually have a demo. I'll give you a link at the very end. Um, and if you want to sign up for a demo, we're running a sweepstakes where you could win a hundred dollar gift card. So just to keep that in mind, but we do have a live demo of this product and it's super cool. Um, essentially what you do is you go in and you think about what are the different stages that my consumers are in 
and what kind of email responses do I want to send to them? So you kind of set that all up ahead of time and you think about these different triggers. You think about these different scenarios in which your consumers might behave within the emails. And then you let the system do its job based off of what they click on, how they act, what they purchase, you're going to have different series set up to respond in different ways. And the coolest part about it is that as time goes on, the AI or artificial intelligence actually learns from these behaviors and it modifies what they're sending based off of that, that history. So it actually works to your benefit where it learns and adapts to your consumer behavior. So again, what this is doing is it's really making people feel like the emails that they're receiving from you are specific to them, that they are essentially a, a segment of one. And that's really what we want people to feel like. But the best part about this is that you're not having to manually go in and do that. You just set that up ahead of time and you let the artificial intelligence work for you. Jenna, I love it. I know that uh, I really do want to see all this. We're running low on time. Uh, no problem. I want to make sure we get that link to the sweepstakes or yes. to, the, to the giveaway. Yeah. Yes. And we actually, that was pretty much it. So um, my final thoughts really are just that if you're not using email marketing, it's time to start. Um, it's really going to help you leverage the most, not just out of social media, but, or I'm sorry, out of email marketing, but really it's going to help you with your overall strategy and overcoming social algorithms and driving traffic to your website and really building a relationship with your audience over time. So as I mentioned, we do have this e-commerce pro package and we do want to give you a link here. So we are offering a chance to win a hundred dollar gift card when you want to sign up for a demo. It's a no obligation demo. So it's just us showing you what the system can do and what it's like. And I created a, a bit.ly link here for you, a shortened link for you to um, go and sign up for that demo. Um, the capitalization in this link does matter. So just make sure that you're typing that incorrectly. But yes, I just wanna thank everybody here today for joining us, um, for joining me, for uh, allowing us to speak and, and give you some insight into constant contact and email marketing in general. Um, we're so thrilled to be here and happy to be a part of this event. So thanks, Derek. Yeah, uh, huge, huge, like just like one line takeaways. And you know what I'd love to do, Jenna, have you back in the future. Love to do a whole session on headlines, email yeah. subject headlines. Don't you think we could talk about that for 30 minutes? Oh, I think yes. I <laughs> these topics, it's like I could talk about each of these things for days and days and days, but I know you all have lots of fantastic speakers that you need to get to, but we will, we would love to do that one day. I, I loved the AI bringing it down to a segmentation of one and showing you had the out of stock sequences. I saw that there was a happy birthday uh, sequence there. I, I, I love all that. I love the notes about the newsletter. I thought that was really uh, awesome. And also the way to drive engagement on social, as well as that note about like, the, there's a reason we want people to click through to products and stuff. It's because of SEO rankings. So I think you, you dropped a whole bunch of knowledge bombs in a short period awesome. of time. And you were able to show us a, a lot more of what constant contact can do for e-commerce, which I haven't seen in a while. I was a user a long time ago, and now I can see that you've, it's just such a robust platform. Yeah. Uh, and there's, I there's think, been a lot, I think of a lot of people who have used us in the past, I, I would highly recommend um, looking at us again, if you're not using us anymore. It, we've changed so much even within the past year and offer so much more than just email marketing and really tie in all of your online strategy together. So I, I highly encourage that. Awesome. Jenna, thank you so much. We're going to move right Sarah. into our next session. Awesome. Bye, everybody. <laughs>